Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. Peter, an 8-year-old boy, appears disconnected from other kids at school, seeming sad about something. But apparently, he has a normal life at home where we even see him playing the piano with his mother, Carol. One night, while sleeping in his room, a sudden noise wakes him up. He looks behind, but doesn't see anyone there. He tries to go back to sleep, but soon the noise becomes so loud that it startles him. He rushes to turn on the lights in his room. He realizes the noise is coming from behind the wall, so he goes over to check and taps on the wall. However, he gets even more frightened when he receives a response to his taps. He goes to his mother and tells her he heard something. She takes him to his room and checks the wall, but she doesn't hear anything there. She tells him that their house is old, so it's natural to have noises at night. Carol tells him that he has a great, big, and beautiful imagination and that all those scary things are just in his head. The next day, at school, the principal introduces the children to the substitute teacher, Miss Devine. Later, she finds Peter in the classroom during recess, and he tells her that he doesn't like recess. Devine suggests that he can stay there and help her with decorating. Suddenly, he gets scared of a spider, but Devine catches it in a glass and helps him release it out the window. That night, he asks his parents what he should dress up as for Halloween. His father, Mark, then asks if he knows the old house at the end of the street with the closed windows and tells him that a few years ago, when he was born, the girl who lived there disappeared on Halloween. He recounts how she went out for trick-or-treating and vanished. Carol says it was a traumatic event for everyone in the neighborhood, and personally, she doesn't like to remember it, implying that this is why they don't let him go out dressed up asking for candy. Peter asks if he will disappear, to which she responds that they would never let that happen to him. Later that night, oddly, we see the wall in the boy's room bulging. Someone then whispers his name, and he becomes terrified, calling for his father. Mark goes over and asks what's happening, and Peter tells him he saw and heard something again. Mark checks there and says he bets it's rats, but he has something that will take care of it. Mark pours rat poison over the wall, but Peter isn't happy when Mark tells him the rats will die if they eat it. So Mark explains to him that sometimes they need to make tough decisions to protect the family. The next day at school, Devine notices Peter drawing something, which worries her, and she visits his house with the drawing. She introduces herself to Carol and says she just wanted to stop by to check in person. Carol tells her she used to be a teacher before becoming a mother. Devine then shows her the drawing and says the kids were drawing for Halloween, and while other children painted monsters and witches, Peter painted that. Carol says it's embarrassing and tells her that Peter has a hyperactive imagination. He still wakes up his father and her in the middle of the night because of this. She then enters and asks Peter about the painting, but Peter stays silent. She asks why he's seeking help from strangers, he responds that he isn't. Later, that night, the voice asks him to wake up, and when he does, it tells him not to be afraid, as it just wants to talk. Peter says he's imagining it, and it's not real. Then the voice says maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But to her, it seems like he needs a friend. She also says that, however, if he doesn't want one, she'll just go away. Peter tells her not to go, and that they can talk. The next day at school, Peter draws a happy face on a pumpkin, and he tells Devine that its name is Hector. She says that name is her favorite. Brian, sitting nearby, overhears them and doesn't like it, so during recess, he shoves Peter, causing him to fall, and then he smashes his pumpkin by jumping on it. Later, the voice asks Peter why he's crying, Peter tells her that Brian bullies him every day. She says she was afraid of something like this, but she believes him and bets he's strong enough to stand up for himself if he just tries. The next day, Brian comes to the classroom with a pumpkin for Peter and apologizes to him. However, after the class ends, Peter keeps remembering what the voice told him last night, to make Brian afraid of him and that he needs to fight back. Peter follows him and shoves him down the stairs but gets scared when he sees that Brian's leg broke in the fall. As a result, Peter is expelled from school, and later at home, his father, Mark, asks him if he has something to say for himself. He says he didn't mean for him to fall down the stairs, to which Mark says he doesn't understand where this behavior is coming from. Carol tells him that Peter painted a child asking for help, and Mark complains that she's only mentioning this now. He asks Peter why he drew such an image, Peter responds that it's because he really heard things in his room. Mark tells him he's grounded and sends him to the basement. 
He then moves the refrigerator, which we see was blocking the basement door. He takes him downstairs and tells him to sit there, and Carol tells him they're doing this because they love him. Now, after they leave, Peter tries to talk to the entity, but when he doesn't get a response, he starts crying. The next day, the principal asks Devine if she went to a student's house, she says she wanted to make sure Peter was okay. He asks her if he's showing up with bruises or wetting his pants, if he's talking about sex or other things a boy his age shouldn't know about, she says no, and the principal says then there's nothing they can do. She tells him something seems strange with his mother, to which he tells her that there's a child who disappeared from their neighborhood years ago, and something like that would make any parent overprotective. Meanwhile, Peter finds a secret underground chamber in the basement, where there's a strange doll. Later, Devine writes her phone number on Peter's math test and then visits his house with it. She gives it to Carol, and then Mark comes out, and Carol tells him she's Peter's former teacher. He then invites her in, and as she walks in, Carol locks the door, leaving her in great tension. Mark offers her a chair, and Carol hangs the test that Devine brought on the refrigerator. Mark offers her coffee, and Devine notices he's bleeding, he says he's just doing some repairs. She then says she's sorry for what happened, but Mark says no apology is necessary. She asks them if they have any idea which school Peter will attend, Mark says he'll be homeschooled, as Carol is the best teacher he could have. Devine says that given his actions, he might benefit from an environment more suited to his needs. But they say they won't hand their child over, and family is what he needs. Devine asks where he is, Mark says he's grounded in his room, but she can't see him, as he doesn't find it appropriate. Devine then says she just wants to say goodbye, to which Carol asks what her interest is in her son, Devine says she wanted to make sure he was okay. Then Carol asks if she thinks Peter is in danger, Mark tries to calm her down, and during this, Peter goes upstairs, knocks on the door, and shouts for help, but his sounds are drowned out by the noise of the washing machine at that moment. Then Mark tells Devine she should leave. Now, as she's about to leave, she turns back and asks Mark what the knocking noise is, and he says it's the washing machine. That night, Carol brings pumpkin pies to Peter and tells him he can come out now. She then gives him a bath, and Mark asks him if he had time to think, he says yes. Mark then asks about what, and he answers that about how he needs to grow up, stop acting badly, stop telling lies, and Carol adds that no more nightmares either. They tell him they are very proud of him, and things will be different from now on, and he won't go back to school anymore. Later, that night, Peter goes to the wall and knocks on it, asking the entity to talk to him. He gets a response, and she says she was worried about him, and he tells her that his mother and father locked him in the basement. She says he needs to be careful with them because they're not what they seem. Peter says he wants to see her, but she says no, as she's been there for a long time, and he wouldn't like her appearance, he would scream and get them caught. Peter says he won't, and she tells him there's a hole behind the wallpaper. He peels off the wallpaper and finds the hole behind it, and throws his ball in there, but then he gets scared when he sees the eye of the thing. He asks her who she is, and she says she's his sister. She had to wait until he was big enough to move the clock that hides a door there in that house and help her escape to get out of the dark and the wall. Peter, already scared, asks her to stop talking as she's frightening him. But she says he needs to be scared because his mother and father are evil, and now his time is coming. Later, Peter hears someone knocking on his door. He gets up and looks at the door and sees someone trying to open it. However, when the door opens, there's no one there. Just then he sees his mother coming out of the bathroom and the lights in the house go out. We then see the rug on the floor spinning, and his father calls him in the corner of his room with a creepy smile on his face. He then tells Peter to see what he did to his mother, and Peter sees her standing at the door with a demonic appearance. Suddenly she starts running towards him, but everything goes dark, only hearing the terrifying sounds of footsteps getting closer rapidly, then she appears again running and jumps on him. However, Peter wakes up the next morning, and Carol tells him he was screaming and thrashing. She calms him down, saying it was just a nightmare, and then asks him what it was about, and he says he doesn't remember. Later that night, Peter asks the entity, which he now thinks is his sister, how she's talking to him there if she said their parents keep her locked in her room, she then says she scratched and crawled her way to him, and that Mark and Carol hate her, and once they get tired of her, she's done for, they'll kill her and then they'll put Peter on the wall too. Peter says they wouldn't kill anyone, to which she says they already have, and he needs to see what's buried in the garden. The next day, Peter digs up the garden, and he gets scared when he finds a human skull there, and Carol watches him from her room. 
However, before she can come out to him, he buries the skull again, and when she asks what he's doing, he turns around with a pumpkin and says he's thinking of carving it. Later that night, his sister tells him it was Halloween before they locked her in the wall. A costume child knocked on the door, so she asked for help and she saw her. But they killed her, and she doesn't want to end up like that girl. Peter says he will get her out of there, and then they will run away. She asks him how, he takes out his math test and says he thinks he knows someone who can help them. He goes to his parents' room to use the phone and calls former teacher Devine. He tells her he needs her help when he hears some noise and finds his mother standing behind him. Devin calls back, but Carol answers the phone. Devine tells her that Peter just tried to call her. Carol says he really tried because he wanted so much to tell her how much he misses her as a teacher, then she told him to give her a touch and say it personally, but unfortunately his shyness seemed to be stronger. She then hangs up the call and tells Peter that he did a very bad thing calling a stranger. She takes him to his room and says she's disappointed in him, and there she notices the peeling wallpaper. She checks it and finds the hole, then comes out of there stunned. As if already knowing, she asks Peter what she told him. Suddenly, the clock chimes, and she says it doesn't matter because whatever happens now will be his fault. She also tells him to wait until his father gets home, then locks herself in her room. That night, Peter's sister tells him that she heard them and they're going to kill them, so he needs to do something. Peter goes downstairs, where he observes his father and mother arguing about something. Mark says they can't keep finding temporary solutions, and only then does Carol notice Peter sitting there. He runs to his room and pretends to be asleep, but Mark follows him and says he knows he's awake, and when he gets home tomorrow, he will help him in the garden. The next day, we see them in the garden, and Peter sees that Mark had already dug, maybe he got rid of the skeleton too. Mark tells Peter it's black rot that's killing the whole garden, and this plague spreads quickly. He says they'll bury the pumpkins and wait for the next harvest to be better. Then he wants him to take the shovel and dig. Later, that night, while they were having dinner, we see that Carol is a bit strange. Just then the doorbell rings and because of it, she gets annoyed and goes to open the door. There are some costumed children whom she scolds and kicks out. She then returns to the table, and Mark asks her if she did something different with the soup tonight, she eats and finds something different, saying it smells like cinnamon. Mark notices that Peter didn't touch his meal, and he asks Peter if he did something. Peter remains silent, and Mark gets angry and asks what he did. Peter, however, only says that he hurt his sister, and Carol, not believing what she just heard, asks what Peter said. Mark asks Carol to call 911 urgently, and as she gets up, Mark's stomach starts to hurt because it was actually the rat poison that smelled like cinnamon. Carol finds out that the phone line was cut, and Mark vomits blood on the table before falling dead. Carol takes a knife and starts chasing Peter, and she manages to grab his leg, but before she can hurt him, she also vomits blood. Peter thinks she's dead too, but suddenly she gets up, and Peter pushes her, making her fall down the stairs and get injured by the knife. He then goes downstairs to get his mother's keys, but she grabs his leg and warns him not to let her out, but he ignores the warning and leaves. He then goes to that clock, and his sister asks if he has the keys, she asks him to move the clock, and when he tries to do so, the clock falls and breaks. He then finds a trapdoor there, and she asks him to open it. Now, as he puts the key in the lock, she slams hard, scaring him. The door then opens slowly, and soon Peter realizes that his sister looks like a monster, so he runs away from there. The entity laughs and Peter locks himself in his room, while we see her coming out of her prison. She then goes to Peter's room, tries to open the door, and asks him what it was like to watch his parents die. Just then the doorbell rings, and the thing comes out, we see it's Brian with his cousin standing outside the house to teach Peter a lesson for what he did to Brian. The front door then opens by itself, and one of them says to do what they came to do. They enter the house and start looking for Peter, who at that moment hides under his bed in fear. One of them then enters his room, and all the others start vandalizing his house, but during this, Brian slips and falls. The guy who was breaking the piano is leaving, unaware of Peter's bizarre sister passing behind him. Then he hears a sound, so he turns around, finding hair on the piano, sliding down. As he approaches the piano, the entity grabs his legs, making him fall and pulling him down, then killing him. In Peter's room, one of the vandals finds Peter under the bed, but before he can grab him, he hears his brother's voice, then goes to see what happened to him. Meanwhile, Brian is horrified to see Carol's dead body there, and only then does the front door close by itself. 
He then hears some noise, and his brother runs out, but the demon girl grabs his leg and starts throwing him around. He asks Brian for help, but he's soon dragged away. Right after that, Brian hears the sounds of footsteps running behind him, and we see it's the thing running on the ceiling around him. Suddenly, spiders start falling on him, to avoid them he crawls backward, but only to find the thing above him, and he screams in terror at the sight of it. His cousin comes out hearing his scream, but the entity attacks him. Meanwhile, we see the teacher Devine heading towards Peter's house, and during this, Peter gets scared to see that the entity dismembered Brian's cousin. She then goes towards Peter's room and climbs onto the bed. Peter looks and sees the entity's hair slowly descending, indicating that she knows he's there and she's going to look right at him. But before that, she keeps talking, saying that when he was born, their parents were very happy. But when she was born, they screamed. So his father made a well, and then he made a cage for her. She says that while he was whining in that warm bed, she was suffering among spider webs and rats, learning to climb, to bite, and how to make him do what she wants. Suddenly, she throws an illuminated pumpkin in front of him, and Peter is terrified to see a head inside it. She then drags him and locks him in the room she came out of. After a while, Devine arrives at Peter's house to see how he's doing and finds the door open. She enters the house and hears someone crying, then sees the shadow of someone in the kitchen. Looking at the state of the kitchen, she tries to call 911, but then she hears a noise and sees the entity's hair, which moves towards the other side. However, before she can understand anything, the entity scratches her leg, causing her to fall, and when she tries to crawl away, she sees the dead body of one of Brian's cousins in two pieces. Suddenly, she hears a noise behind her, and when she looks, she realizes it's the entity approaching, so she gets terrified and tries to grab something to defend herself, but the entity isn't there anymore. She takes the opportunity to run to the front door and escape, but it's locked. Only then does she hear Peter's screams telling her to run. But instead of doing that, she courageously decides to save him and goes upstairs where Peter's screams were coming from, but the entity follows her. She walks slowly and becomes more and more terrified by the scene around her. Soon she arrives in Peter's room and finds his hand reaching out of that hole where he was talking to his sister, but Peter keeps insisting that she has to run. She tells him she won't leave him there, and only then does she realize that the entity is coming towards her in the room, so she quickly closes and locks the door. She asks Peter what that thing is, he tells her it's his sister. The entity then leaves to go after Peter from the other side, passing through the door behind the clock, while Devine tries to break down the wall to free Peter. The entity runs, but before she can reach him, Devine manages to get Peter out of there. They run downstairs and open the door, and when Devine gets out of the house, she realizes that Peter has been held back by the entity. And as Devine tries to go back in to help him, the door closes. After that, when Peter wakes up after a while, he finds himself locked in that underground chamber he saw before, where he finds a stuffed toy, and there he discovers that his sister's name was Sarah. Sarah then enters there and starts crawling towards him, which terrifies him, but he gains more courage and asks why she's like that, Sarah says that not every child can be as perfect as him. She was just born that way, and no one loves a monster. Just then, Devine's voice is heard calling for Peter, she managed to find the entrance to the basement. She goes down the stairs and says she doesn't know what she is, but if she hurts Peter, she will kill her. Then Sarah leaves the chamber and knocks her down at a great speed, then approaches her and was about to finish her off, but then Peter grabs her long hair and manages to get out of the hole. Seeing the opportunity, Devine starts attacking her with a crowbar, causing her to fall into the chamber, and before she can climb up again, Peter closes the lid and locks it. Now, as they were about to leave, Sarah, with a child's voice again, asks him to free her. She says he is her brother and it's in his blood, saying he's just like her. Peter screams no, to which she asks him if he really thinks that we'll keep her trapped down there, and as she speaks, we realize that some time has passed, where we don't know what happened to her, but we hear her voice saying that every night when he lies in bed, he will wonder if he locked the door right or if he saw a shadow move. Saying that every creak, every groan, or every tap on the wall, he will think of her, wondering in fear if it's not her there. Then she appears behind him, and as he turns around, she says she will always be with him. 